but here's a look at how it did go. England are on the way. Not quite out of the middle of the bat. Got uh, two runs for it. Big appeal around the wicket. End of the over, not out. England two without loss. Never easy to get a decision from around the wicket. The left-hander. Well, captain's moving all right. Good stop there from mid-off. Had a bit of work to do in these first four overs. Well, he's in the firing line there at mid-off. Know that they're a depleted team, New Zealand, but every time you come here, you will see a really good fielding side. Pride themselves on the fielding, the ability of the team. Some youngsters in the side. Oh, they're going through. Bit of indecision from the, these two. Well, it was a single. I think he's just saying he didn't hear the call, Alistair Cook. Just wonder if he's guilty of watching where the ball went. Can happen in one day cricket. Excellent feeling again. Cheers, bowlers up kind of fielding it's a bit of a hiding to nothing in one day cricket in these conditions so this kind of fielding excellent well I just go back to the 2020s and that's one area that you're always or I'm always looking at England how, how much energy how mobile I thought they were excellent they were really really good because they'll have to go some to match this New Zealand side New Zealand wherever you go you might say well it's depleted they've not got the best batters or bowlers but they'll field well very athletic team. Diving in. He got an early call there. Mustard just into the offside. Hit and run. Just left Cook a little. I think he got home. Boundary for England. The slip has been moved wider and wider and wider. Mustard just opens the face, lines the ball down to a vacant area. Now, is this intentional? Oh, face of the bat, it opens. was half an appeal that's all it is it's 19 without loss inside edge will bring four touch of good fortune for mustard it's 27 without loss Edged and McCullum gets a palm to it, or maybe just a finger end. Flying to his left, couldn't hang on. And it's a let off for Cook. To really wait for that. Gosh, he had to wait for that. And he still couldn't get it to past cover point. was taken off of by Martin on that occasion he he like the other New Zealanders have been using that variation quite well see it dropping down below 75 kilometers an hour miles per hour I should say sorry we use uh, kilometers per hour only in New Zealand Volta yeah I'll get up to speed on that 
All gone. Good bowling from Martin. Just nipped it back into Cook. I think it brushed the pad on the way through. But Cook has gone, made 11 from 26 balls and never really looked settled. And Martin has put him out of his misery. Good re reward for excellent perseverance in terms of line and length. Just went through the gate. Again, it didn't come on and Cook was searching. But he left a little hole and uh, Chris Martin went right through it. Cook gone for 11, 34 for one. Oh, there's, a, there's trouble here. Bell and the run out, Jinx. He's set off, been sent back, slipped, dropped his bat. Oh, that's a good shot off the front foot. The first boundary in front of the in front of the wickets for England. First boundary for Bell. Yes, good stroke, and then he made the right choice of going up and over the inner ring. He didn't try and hit it down. He used a bit of bounce that uh, Chris Martin provided him. It's the first real loose ball. Good stroke. He uh, kind of went and met it early. Martin in his uh, sixth over, one for 17. Just the boundary off the over. 40 for one in it. <laughs> Big appeal from behind the stumps. Keeper and slip. Nothing from the bowler. Going down the leg side, I'm sure. Good release from Oram. He's a good bowler. Inside edge, onto stumps, after a boot change that did him no good at all, Bell has gone for five. Yeah, slower ball as well, just 70 miles an hour, and maybe just didn't quite have the concentration turned on fully. You'll see that a lot today, or maybe one or two times, because of the slow nature of the pitch, it's a dog of a pitch, and you go through your shot, you're not there, the inside edge comes into play, so Bell has gone for five from 16 balls, England struggling 42 for two. can sense that uh, New Zealand in the field have enjoyed themselves more and more as this uh, first innings of the day has developed. 55 for three it is now. Kevin Peterson, one of the big guns in this England side, one of the biggest guns, has uh, managed to drag it on off the inside edge, onto the top of the pad, back onto the stumps, and he's gone for six. Well, you always know it's a slow pitch when you have a couple of drag-ons. Bell went with a drag-on inside edge. Kevin Peterson follows. He's gone for six. England, 55 for three. Oh, slice of luck. It's four runs for Collingwood. Between the keeper and slip, neither of them had any chance, it seems, of getting there. 65 for three. In the air, just past the diving mid-wicket. Ross Taylor, I think, at mid-wicket, who's a brilliant fieldsman. Yeah! And another one. Phil Mustard goes. He struggled away. And this time looking to work Scotty Styris across the line into the leg side. England have lost their fourth wicket. I don't think New Zealand could ask for a better wicket to start the series with a comprehensively beaten in the two 2020s, which outplayed by a better side here. We've got a slow pitch. Guys are rolling their fingers over the ball. Scotty Storris is doing it more times than not as a seamer. Chris Martin did it. And that wicket there is a common theme, Athens. It just seems English players are trying to get their hands through the ball. The slowness of the pitch, a little bit of turn, a little bit of nip. So it's causing them some problems.
shot for none. And for wrist work, in a way, Shah's play. Down the pitch and rocketing the ball past Vittori. That was hit hard. Well, Shah's an excellent player of spin and watching him already, he's very positive with his feet. He good depth in the crease. This one here coming to meet the ball. Catch it! Just short of Chris Martin. Looking to again to work the ball into the onside, not finding it easy, mistiming it in the air for a long, long time. Martin was way deep on the boundary and couldn't make the ground. Oh, oh trouble, trouble! Yeah. Is he gone? Has he got his bat down in time? Throw wasn't brilliant, it was a little bit wide. Assad Rauf has called for the replay. Paul Collingwood doesn't like it, don't think, judging by his reaction. He got the diving and he got his bat down early. Has he made his ground? Oh, it's a brilliant piece of fielding. They seem nonplussed about it. But they should be. Because he's short. But looking at the New Zealanders, they're not interested. But they will be in about five seconds time, ten seconds time when the red light comes on, because that's a fantastic piece of fielding. And a huge wicket. Collingwood, a key wicket. He's played so well. <laughs> New Zealand can't believe it. They've gone walking back to their marks as if they thought Paul Collingwood had easily made his ground. He's inches short, and all of a sudden, out came up on the screen, and a look of surprise on the New Zealand fieldsman's faces is only matched by the look of disappointment now on the England captain's face. Collingwood run out for 12, and England five down for 80, 26 overs gone, in a good deal of trouble. Catch! Pulled away, there is a man in the deep, straight to him, he's gone. What a death, a drag down ball from Styris, one man to find, and Ravi Bopara finds Fulton. In the leg trap, you would say, he can't believe it, what have I done? Pulls a very inviting delivery, away into the leg side, one fielder at deep square leg doesn't really have to move. Two metre P to Big Pete Fulton, he's out there, it's an off cutter again, he drags it down. Looks as if it's four or six all the way. Now he's in trouble. Pete Fulton doesn't move. Thank you very much from him. Deep trouble for England. 91 for six, but part of three. It's close, long way down. That's why he'll get away with it. Could be a trouble at the non-striker's end if he hits. Double play at both ends. LBW probably just sneaking down, direct hit, and I think Swan was gone. England are looking dozy at times. They're at sixes and sevens with the picks, they're at sixes and sevens with the fielders as well. The massive appeal, look at Swan turned round, looking where the ball is, he's been called through for a single, oh, out by a furlong. Under the over, 96 for six. Well, let's look again at that LBW shout. He's a long, long way down. Graham Swan turns to get back into his ground. It's a huge LBW, and then he watches the ball. He's got a call from his partner. He's going back into his ground. Shaw's actually called him through. You can see Shaw coming into picture. He says, hang on, no. Shaw says, there's a single there any day. Out by a distance. Get. Finds the gap. Will it rush away for four? Gives chase, there's a dive. The dive was a bit early. And England finally have their sixth boundary. 100 comes up. Could be tight again. That looks very close, great fielding from backward point. Swan's heads down, Jamie Howe with the fielding, and we're going to go upstairs again for the third umpire. Well, they look like they've got the man this time, New Zealand. 
jumps down and turns back sharp return oh, i'm certain this is a goner we'll see it from a different angle swan diving back in to no avail that's another swan will know soon enough the crowd will know soon enough new zealand also england are in desperate trouble drinks come on third umpire billy bowden wants another look well it's pretty conclusive and we're all going to find out right now England is seven down. Always look that way. Excellent in the field. New Zealand. Brilliant performance from them. Swan seven, 103 for seven. That's close, round the wicket. Just outside the line, I think. Styris cannot believe it. I think this is a really good decision going to be pumped up out there New Zealand and certainly will appeal local umpire Gary Baxter will have a look at this I think he's just outside the line of Austin playing a shot there's that off cutter grip again oh I tell you what is there another one is there another run out here it's going upstairs and the New Zealanders are confident and this time it looks like Shah could be out of his ground. I don't think there's any could be about it, David. No, once again, the uh, fielding has been very, very sharp. It's always been a mark of Kiwi sides, black cap sides, New Zealand sides. And we've seen them grow in confidence, I think, through the day. New Zealand uh, might have thought originally when they had to feel first they were at a slight disadvantage but throughout this innings they've just grown sharper and sharper the throws have been good look at that it's right by the stumps McCallum only has to take it and shift the gloves an inch or two up come the bales <laughs> but we got there in the end it is out it's the third run out uh, of the innings and uh, England now officially eight down for 104. Oh, just evaded the uh, fine leg. That would have capped it all if that had flown down into the hands of uh, fine leg. That's boundary for England for nine overs. Coming courtesy of a, a rare bouncer from Jacob Oram. Well, just had to be careful, make sure that that uh, trailing leg didn't knock the bales off. Oh, I think that's a nick, but it's a biggish nick. That's why the Cun can hang on to it. Definite edge, wasn't it? Turned a bit. Big thick edge. I think that one might be out. It's a little leading edge. <laughs> the gentlest of court and bowls you will ever see. The ninth wicket goes down. This consulate Ryan Sidebottom departs. A, a very tame dismissal, a, a weak way to go, really, if you're a tail ender facing an off spinner. Back, you'd think, wow, well, why didn't I have a go at that? But it did spin, it just stuck in the pitch a little bit. And uh, Jeet Patel is a, a bigger spinner of the ball than Daniel Vittori. He's got one to grip in the pitch there. They've taken the return catch. England 120 for nine now. Yay! And that'll do. Jeet Patel is appealing for an LBW. I don't think he, he realized that the ball had snuck through and bowled. The last man, England's uh, innings has come to a close for 130. It's well short of their expectations. And uh, they've not managed to see out the 50 overs either. Again, quicker ball, push through. Knows that Jimmy Anderson's trying to get the ball somewhere just to get the strike back to Stuart Broad. Out thought by the bowler. 
Stuart Broad did well. He's undefeated on 18, Jimmy Anderson, the last man to go. So that's what it was, 130 as a final total for England, just a couple of balls short of their full 50. Unbelievably in uh, many ways, top score of the innings, just 31 by Phil Mustard at the uh, top of the order. Uh, they never got going. Uh, New Zealand, to their credit, bowled excellent lines, fielded beautifully. Uh, those runouts, those three runouts, cost England dear as well. Um, it was a mixture there of schoolboy error and great fielding that uh, led to them. So 130. Just look at the bowling figures, and that also tells a story. No one at all expensive. Uh, Mills, the most expensive, at just three runs per over. Uh, Martin bowled beautifully, picked up those couple of wickets. Oram and Staris just stymied everything in the middle, and the spinners at the end, well, they also bowled very, very nicely, very tightly. So a very good performance of the ball and a very good performance in the field in general terms. So New Zealand now know what they need. 131 runs it is to win this game. They've got plenty of time, all those 50 overs at their disposal. Asking rate just, uh, just over two and a half runs. Swing there. Good signs for side bottom. Yeah, 12 wickets in the five matches against Sri Lanka for Ryan side bottom. Only once going for 50, I believe. And uh, really has led this one day attack very nicely for England. One of the keys in getting a good start. Yeah, very quickly he's become. The linchpin of the attack, really, the, the bowler to whom the captain turns. When he needs a wicket or when he needs a tight spell. It's amazing how quickly he's taken that mantle on. Or late movement, and at the moment, Ryder looking uncertain outside that off stump. James Anderson then for the second over of the innings and McCollum straight away down the pitch signaling his intentions. Thickish outside edge brings in just a, sing a single. I think we're, we saw there very clearly what Brendan McCollum will be about in these opening overs. Certainly. He loves to walk down the, down the pitch. Edged again down to third man. Another single, looking to hit that over extra cover. Wow, wow, that must have been close. At first I thought there was an inside edge onto the stumps. The inside edge went onto the pad and would have been far away. Very strange, wasn't it? Carrying through to the keeper in the end is a big inside edge. Top of the pad straight over the middle stump. It's connected this time. Well, not maybe quite out of the middle of the bat, but it's good enough and it'll bring New Zealand their first boundary. Yeah, as you said, not out of the middle completely, but enough to get over the mid on fieldsman. That turned in his hands a little bit. Key there was he got more the length he was looking for from side bottom. Not a pretty stroke, it must be said, but it's mighty effective. Jesse Ryder joining in the fun. That's gone all the way for six. Well, he's just chipped this, Jesse Ryder. The timing was superb. Not a full swing of the bat by any stretch, and that has sailed away into the grandstand. Just a flick of the wrist, you're right. Powerful lad. Straight down the ground and hard. Lovely shot, probably the shot of the inning so far. A yeah, good shot, Brendan McCullum. Again, the length that he's been looking for. No swing there 
James Anderson. Good timing. this time that's beautifully hit I'm not sure whether it's gone all the way it hasn't as had Ralph signals at four but it was a magnificent stroke well that's what I talk about with Jesse Ryder he is not one-dimensional he is not across the line mid-wicket player he's hit through that ball beautifully he really has just superb timing it's only two or three yards from going for six over extra cover Big shout for that. I think McCullum was a long way forward. It hit the top of the flat of the pad as well. Was a long way forward. He took a long way out of the crease. Brendan McCullum, benefit of the doubt there, going his way. It's away down to Anderson at third man. be slightly disconcerting for Ryan Sidebottom to see McCullum just charging so early. I'm surprised he hasn't slipped him a bouncer yet. Shorter from Sidebottom, walked away on the leg side by Jesse Ryder. He didn't quite get hold of it. Had enough legs to get over Alistair Cook at mid on, brings him a couple. It ends the seventh over, and New Zealand at 26 for none. Well, McCullum has uh, kept moving pretty much all the way through this innings. And from the bowler's point of view, Anderson and uh, side bottom, they've had to keep a, a sharp eye on him. See what he's going to do next. They've shown intent, haven't they, the New Zealand batsmen? They've said to the England bowlers, we're not going to just wait, we're not going to let you settle in. You've plenty to think about. I don't think it would have made any difference whether it was batting first or second, they'd have played the same way, these two. And again, the big shot, it's an edge, but it's as effective as the middle of the bat. Slid away to third man. Slid fine to the field out, that's four runs. They're not going to die wondering, are they? Well, chance you are. It's your day. Comes off, you get away with it. Yeah, I just wonder whether England will reflect and think, we didn't really try any of this. Early on, we allowed New Zealand to bowl to us. We, got our, we dug a hole for ourselves, and then we just kept digging. That's nicely played. That's going to go all the way as well. Quite deliberately played that backward square leg region. Knows as a man a deep square. He's gone for the finer option. 37 without loss. Very well struck. Powerfully struck. Just a little bit short of a length. Just enough bounce there for Ryder to get it away on the onside. Play through the line. Drag it away there. And they're enjoying it. Well, the other worrying thing is a good shot. Steps forward. It's on the top of the bounce. England managed seven fours in the entire innings. New Zealand already hit six fours and a six. Consequently, 42 without loss from 8.3 overs. Much more effort from Ryan Sidebottom. Quick bounce up. And uh, Ryder, for all his talents, was never on to that. No, that was in the keeper's gloves before he completed the shot. Well through. And for pace.
Well, he's still swinging away, aiming for that leg side. They've had one out of the meat of the bat. One bouncer too quick for him. And that one slid underneath this time. Yeah, it died, didn't it? Just dies in the pitch. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. It's put down. Graham Swan at short mid-wicket. He's pretty close there, and it was pretty well struck, but it's one of those ones that have to stick. Well, it's a should be taken. There's no excuse for this. Yes, yeah, clipped away. It's clipped away well, but both should be taken. Just that uh, look tells you everything. He knows that too. A little bit low with the bounce again. Uh, if Ryder had got hold of it, well, there is a man just in front of square on the boundary there. He had a long look at the pitch here, didn't he? he expected this to bounce a lot more. Just got over the off stump. Mustard taking this over his ankles. Enthusiastic appeal from uh, Stuart Broad. No response from the umpire. I think it's a good decision. I think it's just drifting down the leg side. Just swings a bit here. Gary Baxter. Just sliding down the leg side for me. Very good decision. gone a long way up and it's also got a lot of distance on it it's gone a long way back into the crowd over wide long on and uh, without too much effort it seemed either good timing this intense there but he's going to get it right and he does this is spot on right out the middle of the bat really good balance in the shot quick hands Enough weight into the shot to get it going a long, long way there. Oh, All that well. So Ryder coming to him, change the pace, flatter delivery, push through. Beautifully controlled shot, beautifully played shot too. Timing was uh, exquisite with that. Absolutely, that's what this is about, it's timing. Outside the off stump. So it's playing the shot from out there, it'll always go squarer. And behind square, this time so well he can't get round. Somewhat over ambitious this time. It was much too wide of off stump. And uh, Ryder missed it comfortably. 58 without loss now. Up it goes. Just dropped short. Didn't have the carry on it. Anderson was down there at third man. It dropped a good five or six yards in front of him. Slow ball, attempted. Ball was a leg cutter. Probably the lack of pace in the delivery. Ball short of her man. Frustration. Oh, we've got a confusion and where New Zealand were excellent in the field and engineered runouts. England have missed a chance there.
Mustard does well here. Just misses. And that's been launched into the air, but it's only succeeded in finding the man. And the luck has changed a little bit for England here. Ryder has slightly miscued that. Replays the shot as he leaves the field. But he is now gone for 31. And New Zealand have lost their first wicket at 61. Yeah, I think he gets a little high on the bat. Seems to hang in the wind. Luke Wright does well, judges it well. Makes it look quite comfortable in the end. But England have got a breakthrough. 70 needed for victory. But Jess Ryder's gone for 31 for 50 balls. It's 61 for one. Oh, it was a brilliant effort. Very quick reactions initially from uh, Phil Mustard. That looked to have come off the inside edge, bobbled up off the pad. And it was very quickly out of the traps, but it just wouldn't stick for him. Well, I think he catches it until he hits the ground. It's one of those, it goes in, takes off, and then, watch, he's got it, but then as the arms hit the ground, the ball springs out. And that's over the top of uh, mid-off. One bounce and over the boundary as well. Four more. And it's 66 for one. Bouncer pulled away, square legs, very square, that goes fine. Four more to McCullum, he moves to 40. Well, it's variation from Collingwood, the captain. Most of what he's bowled so far has just been full and slow. That was quick and short, and McCullum saw it quickly. Could be a catch, looks like a bit of glove. Yes, he's gone. McCullum turned his back on the umpire, I think he knew it. A good take from Mustard and maybe that's what England need. McCullum's gone. Frustrated, I think. Brendan McCullum, I think he got a bit of glove on this. It was a fairly half-hearted appeal, it has to be said, from Broad and Mustard. to tell from that angle whether it was hip or glove. Doesn't matter now, it's in the scorebook as caught mustard, bowled broad. McCullum has gone for 42 from 42. New Zealand 83 for two. This will be tight at the non-striker's end. A dive gets him home, but England again missed the stumps. They do that too often. A good over from broad. Three runs on the wicket, 84 for two. Pulled away powerfully with a welcome boundary. Just knocking these off bit by bit, New Zealand. A yeah, good shot for Jamie Howe, and he is very strong on anything short. That's why he's found himself uh, with a good record. The 16 one day internationals. He can score off both front and back foot. Very traditional player. Nothing strange about the way he plays, but effective on both feet. appeal and almost a second appeal from England this had Rauf unmoved just wonder whether it's sliding down leg side it's a ball of full length just got a touch of slide to it look at the keeper he's just drifting down the leg side he has got a tendency Ross Taylor to play around that front pad he doesn't take a big stride he backs his hand eye coordination and tends to play around his pad just prop forward and it's susceptible to LBW Just about reached it but did it effectively finished off with an awful delivery clattered away for four it's 95 for two welcome back more of the same four overs none for 25 make that 4.1 on for 29. 
Well, uh, I get the feeling it's not his day. Really well controlled full stroke this. In front of square. Good example of how to play that stroke from how. Gets this away. The pirate, it's four. Twenty-four have been bowled, it's 105 for two. Oh, big shot. Big shot. Way, way back. In this enormous cake tin. It's 118 for two. Icing on the cake, if you like. Jamie Howe moves on to 24. Big shot. Taylor hits this. Gets all of it. Oh, it's just right as well. Great length. It's only a matter of time before he lined one of those up. That's where he looks to hit the spinners. He's got tremendous hand speed, has Ross Taylor. He's a strong lad, he's an athlete, but he's got magnificent hands and he just gets them through the ball. Pulled away. Oh, strongly. To the leg side. Rockets to the boundary. Really for side bono. I don't see a future in bowling this length to Jamie Howe. He's already played a couple of spanking examples. And look at that. Swivel, got up on his toes, got over the top of it. Rolled the wrist, kept it down. No chance of being caught and timed it. Well, that is something for the memory bank for England. That this uh, Jamie Howe, very comfortable on the back foot. That's better. Big outside edge. That's the place for anybody usually, full of length, drifting across. Outside edge, keeper does the rest. It's a disappointing dismissal here for Howe because he was playing so well, he got himself in. He would have desperately wanted to have seen himself through to the end. Scored himself a red inker, you could say, but it was never there to drive. Perhaps the shorter balls, he was playing them well, it pushed him back. Never there to drive, he flirted at it. And he got the outside edge. That's there's still some open there. They're applauding it. All well, the crowd's applauding that effort from how he's out for 28. It's 122 for three. Mm, threaded through. Threaded through all the way. Five to win. No matter what the situation, there's always time and room for a nice cover drive. Just pushed into the gap. All the skills of cricket, a lovely head position, placement, timing. Controlled flow of the cricket bat. In the air, high in the air. Deep fine leg, another wicket for England, side bottom the catcher. Broad gets another trick. And it's a duck for Styrus. And uh, you can expect a very grumpy man when he gets back into the changing shed. And if I was Jamie Howe, I might just vacate the premises right now. Styrus came in with not many runs to score and he hasn't contributed. He's been well caught in the deep by side bottom, but he is out for the dreaded duck in a no-win situation. 127 for four. Big appeal, he's outside the line, he's outside the line. Good rapport there between Stuart Broad. Very backs to the umpire. You can see that he's playing a shot and he moves so far across. Ross Taylor, it's way outside the stumps, the line of the stumps. Well, that'll do, but I don't think he wants to see it again, Ross Taylor. New Zealand at a counter. Terrific comeback after their ordeal in the 2020s. Brendan McCullum showed the way at the top of the innings. It's Ross Taylor that's finished it off. 
game is over and done, done and dusted after 30 overs. New Zealand looking good today. Well, New Zealand's had 20 overs to spare when they got to 131 for four. Taylor and Fulton, the not out men at the end. But Ryder and McCullum had set the tone at the start of the innings, positive with the bat, positive with their intent. And by the time they were parted, New Zealand were well on their way to victory. So a successful day in the field, followed by a successful day, a successful night with the bat. Uh, for England in the field, it wasn't quite the, the same story. One or two men a little bit too expensive there. Anderson for one at sevens. Uh, Swan at the best part of sixes. Uh, Broad was probably the pick of them. Three wickets for 26 from his nine overs. He showed uh, notable spirit in a losing cause there. His economy, 2.89. Uh, but England always knew that in the field here they needed a lot of luck if they're going to restrain New Zealand, and it wasn't going to happen. So the uh, final analysis. New Zealand winning this first of five at one internationals by six